Hi, I'm Rebecca Brady and I'm joined here today by James Pink, Vice President of Health Sciences Consulting for NSF. Thank you very much for joining me, James. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for having me. Great. Um, so how do you see the medical device industry pivoting to digital? Well, I think there are several pivots that we've seen very recently. Certainly the um, the first is, of course, like most of us, into um, an environment of home working and how to actually you know, ensure that we're still connected together in some of the operations processes, some of the support functions, some of the quality and regulatory functions, and how in a, in, in a, a pandemic uh, they're able to manage their sort of day-to-day uh, -day business, uh, but remotely. So one of the first sort of major pivots that we've seen is in the sort of the, the, the IT systems, the working from home, um, and of course, that brings with it various challenges when you have priorities such as regulatory submissions, when you're trying to work on quality uh, system out of specification investigations, for example, or just, you know, really trying to get a batch of um, medical devices out there into the uh, out there into the market and back out into the health institutions. The second is actually within the product portfolio. What we've seen is unless um, the medical device manufacturers, IBD manufacturers are, you know, specifically related to either diagnostic or therapy for COVID-19 or any similar respiratory conditions, um, we've seen things such as um, a reduction in the number of elective surgeries. We've seen that hospitals have had to completely redesign how they are delivering healthcare. And as a result, that's had quite a significant impact on the industry. And of course, then with that significant impact, the organizations have looked at their product portfolios and, and had to pivot their portfolios so that there is some element of digital support, be it whether it's a mobile app, be it whether it's actually, you know, uh, remote training for people who are actually using the products, or whether it's something that is augmenting an existing product um, from a sort of a digital medium. Great. And you talked there about sort of the, the sort of challenges there, but what has been the most considerable benefit to companies now adopting digital solutions with their existing products? Um, I think the benefit really is 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 twofold. I think obviously the the level of engagement that you can get um, in in digital is, is is very very high. You know, people downloading apps, people being able to, you know, access people that were potentially you know out there in 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 the care environments or out there on the at the front line uh, have found themselves with a little bit more sort of um, not necessarily time, but a little bit more. Um, head space to be able to address, you know, some of the, uh, the, 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 the queries that the manufacturers have had. Um, in terms of the, you know, the, the, the product portfolio benefits, really it's, it's because many organisations have always been strategically looking at the digital as being a, a solution either in the prediction of, of disease or in some of the augmented therapy delivery or, of course, in terms of the, the follow-up of some of the products that they've got out in the market and so um, you know whilst the, the pandemic is you know very very serious it's very concerning it's it's hitting people economically as well as within their health uh, the realities are is that the, the the sort of the pivot to digital has brought about this ability to be able to analyze different sources of data different data sets and of course be able to provide information to users in a medium that before you know that they were not not as readily accessible. Um, I'll give you one example. Sorry, Rebecca, but uh, I, I mean one of the examples could be um, in terms of sort of uh, let, let's say nursing, uh, where normally the nursing staff in a, a sort of a in a therapy delivery outside of infectious diseases, for example, like COVID, but um, they they would be always, you know, on the front line. There would be very little time to be able to actually sit and engage with the device manufacturers around certain topics that are affecting their devices. Whereas now with a digital pivot, you know, the ability of, you know, the engagement at the front line in terms of user inquiries, uh, you know, just seeking product information is 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 now you, you know being being accelerated um, in ways that we've we've never seen before. I think that's a really good example there, actually. And also, um, these pivots obviously bring challenges. So, what are the regulatory challenges that these these pivots are presenting? Well, I think the regulatory challenges are, are, are I guess. 
there are many facets of, of, of the challenges. The first is that, of course, um, from a product safety perspective, when we look at um, physical, active, non-active medical devices, for instance, uh, we've got a very large data set of what are the, the risks, what are the issues, what are the hazards and harms that can be caused as a result of those type of devices. But bringing in a digital sort of um, aspect to it presents new unknown risks. Um, we, we obviously have begun to experience many things around cyber security for risks. And, and that, of course, you know, was was relatively prevalent when we were not in a pandemic and when, you know, only 25 percent of us were actively engaged in digital technologies. Now we're up to the sort of the 80, 85 percent mark. And of course, those those risks really, really do come to the fore. The second is on the integrity of that data. So the the level of data acquisition that we're now seeing, the ability to be able to analyze that data and of course use either predictive algorithms, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all sorts of you know tools to be able to understand, generate, gather, analyze that data has now got new risks because of course the ability to move uh, from the evaluation of that data directly into the delivery of a care or into a diagnosis has, has really increased with the advent of you know, these pivots that we're experiencing. I think another element, of course, from a regulatory perspective is the, the, the fact that many of these applications came through on emergency use authorizations across the world. And as a result of that, the actual level of regulatory scrutiny in some areas is not as comprehensive as it would be mm -hmm. if this was in a, a sort of a routine um, non-pandemic environment. And I don't know what one of those routine things are, in all honesty, but I, I think that that ability for people to take a large breath, to be very, very methodological and methodical in their approach to what are the risks, what are the controls, are we achieving state of the art in those controls? I think many of those questions and the subsequent scrutiny has inevitably, because we were you know, highly stressed, there was only so many resources to do this, that there, there, there's possibly a, um, a, a a number of, of, of technological solutions that may not come up to the level of scrutiny uh, that, that we would all expect under a normal regulatory regime. So I think there's a couple of things, you know, in, in that, that that do present some uh, unique challenges for regulatory agencies and, of course, manufacturers um, post sort of this, um, th this digital integration. Great. Thanks for that, James. You've um, talked quite a lot about sort of benefits and the challenges, but if you look now to the sort of the opportunities going in digital, how is that going to affect things like products and profits and even sort of productiv productivity and people? Yeah, I, th I think if we if we sort of look at it from a product perspective, I think augmenting a, a, a sort of a, a therapeutic medical device with a digital uh, twin or a digital assistant or something that is really um, adding benefit and augmenting that product is, is, is something that we'll see, you know, hopefully um, a, a reduction in, for example, use errors. Uh, because there is much more active engagement in, in, in the use environment and the use case. Um, I see that the in terms of profitability, uh, from a product perspective, we can see that, you know, the investments that companies make will be much, uh, will, will be more data driven and not data driven from the sort of the the traditional rep going in and talking to the sort of the, 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 the main clinician involved for procurement or talking to, in the UK, for example, someone like in an NHS supply chain. But that data that they'll have obtained will be real. It will be real frontline data that will be able to shape product development, shape product improvements. And of course, you know, if you've got a product that is really performing to your needs, is re and, and, and an organization that is responding to those needs, then you should see a uh, an increase in revenues because of adoptability and option. And you should see a, a reduction in costs in terms of activity based costs around complaint handling, around um, failure investigation, around field safety notification, those those elements that, you know, generally do sneak up behind you and, and give you that element of surprise. I think if we talk about the digital pivots in production and operations, you know, many organizations have 
traditionally sort of steered away, they've been quite risk averse to adopting digital technologies, for example, within operation systems or within systems that are uh, within quality management, uh, particularly if they have incumbent systems that they would have to inform regulators around the change. So there's always been a bit of a, I guess, an impedance or a uh, uh, not a refusal as such, but it's been very, very difficult for everyone to get on board in an organisation to say, "Hey, let's let's install this new electronic batch record." You know, it it, it would probably disrupt the organisation for twelve weeks. It would it would have to go through new regulatory approvals. It would cost it all of this, and 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 the payback we're not sure. Whereas now, under sort of the working from home un, under COVID, you know, those those situations and decisions have been made. That there isn't this sort of oh, should we shouldn't we they have and as a result of that in an operation sense you know to be able to move the model away from reaction to prediction and actually watch you know your manufacturing trends look at um you know your product the processes of, of making that product your supply chain and the resilience within that supply chain enables you to be a lot more predictive and therefore you may not suffer as many out of specification results which is is really cost you you might be able to reduce your deviations and more importantly your insights the data that you generate will really help inform where you have to put your hard-earned cash in terms of manufacturing improvements um you know production operations training competency and of course you know the the, the next stages of automation so i i see that there is a a, a huge opportunity um in in this sort of pandemic to sort of reflect on uh, the digital strategies and and see the net benefits not just from a product but from a process perspective as well yeah the pandemic has definitely changed a lot and it's very interesting to hear you know the impact it has on digital can you describe how nsf are assisting organizations in the switch to a digital portfolio or production yeah uh, we've 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 always been in uh, the sort of the the software development the uh, the sort of the computer system validation cyber security space you know for the last 20 years many of our, myself included and my colleagues have been in and around the sort of the the risk and risk controls associated with you know any type of software or any type of you know digital technology be it whether it's the the actual network or whether it's the hardware or whether it's the you know the the actual application that, that's been undertaken so NSF has a, a sort of a, a, a unique knowledge of the risks and the controls and the things that you have to do to give yourselves assurance that, you know, the, the, the digital adoption that you've taken, be it whether it's in manufacturing or in your product range, is being undertaken in terms of the state of the art. And that is that the, 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 the organisations understand their risks and we help them to understand what those risks are. So we have an observatory that is really looking at, you know, what are the latest cybersecurity threats? What are the latest uh, design uh, elements around the software that can cause, you know, either interoperability issues or integration issues, or they may just simply prohibit you from achieving what the what the users need uh, based upon the software. So we we really do concentrate on understanding those risks, and in our consulting engagements that we've done over the years we've sort of honed the way of being able to deliver insights into our clients in in order to be able to so support them either in the in, in in the design stage by helping them understand the design development plans that are required or the regulatory strategies all all the way through to sort of the the formal validation and integration of those software either into the product portfolio or into the operations well, thank you so much today for joining me, James. Um, NSF will be joining us at the MedTech Summit for the whole week. So if you have any questions for James or the rest of the NSF team, do reach out to them and, and have these important conversations about digital and, and, and the future of digital in your company. Um, but for now, thank you so much, James, for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the summit. That's great. Thank you very much, Rebecca.